Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Isaiah chapter 63 verse 10, Romans chapter 8 verse 3, and Leviticus chapter 16 verse 10. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for loving on us and giving us help in our time of need. Guide us Holy Spirit, in Jesus name we pray, amen. All right you guys. Um, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he turned to be their enemy and himself fought against them. All right. And so um, this is just talking about the children of Israel, where God was making his covenant with them. He wanted his spirit to be in them. And somehow they got off track and they began to rebel against him and grieved his Holy Spirit's guidance for them. It says, therefore, he turned to be their enemy and himself fought against them. And so remember, even though it's saying Holy Spirit here, um, the Holy Spirit had not descended upon the earth in the way that we know now. This is corporately, right? The Holy Spirit was leading them and guiding them. And so um, it says, but they rebelled. So all of them as one rebelled against God and the covenant that he had provided. And it says, and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he turned to be their enemy and himself fought against them. All right. And so this is representative of the times to come, right? As well as what God has saved us from, right? He has not only come to us as a Holy Spirit um, for the world, but for the individual, right? And, and he leads us and guides us into all truth, meaning he shows us the way, right? It says, um, therefore, he turned to be their enemy and himself fought against them. We know that Christ is not fighting against us as believers, right? So we have been redeemed. We have been made where once we were enemies of God, we're now friends of God, right? So God has saved us from a great um, turning away that could have led to our destruction. And so we need to walk in obedience and not in rebellion, right? God has a great will for our lives and he wants it to be fulfilled so we need to walk by his holy spirit um we need to be a friend of god and we need to um not allow ourselves to be drawn in by the world right we need to be drawn in by the spirit of god and walk with him all right and so the second um verse that the lord gave me was romans chapter 8 verse 3 for god has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemns sin in the flesh all right and so christ did it right how did we get over our rebellion how did we get over our sin how did we get over our our waywardness from god christ did it he overcame sin right he condemned sin in the flesh christ is the only one who condemns sin why because he actually paid the price for our sins right our sins have been handled our sins have been atoned for so so now we just walk by the spirit of god and and we are are walking in right standing with god right we listen to his voice we know that eternal salvation has been provided through christ jesus and so it says for god has done with the law we can by the flesh could not do the the law could not provide eternal life the law could not produce righteousness in men the law could not um, cover man's sins the law could point out sin right and so but christ when christ came he did what what the law could not do amen all right it says by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh all right. And so God came to, and he, he was like us, right? He was, he was in flesh just like us, but he did not sin. He was completely innocent. And that transfer of sin um, took place and the innocent died and the guilty were set free. Amen. And so God took that guilt 
for himself and made us innocent now, right? All right. And so the third verse that the Lord gave me was Leviticus chapter six, verse 10. But the goal on which the lot fell for Azazel shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it, that it may be sent away into the wilderness to Azazel. All right. And so this character as Azazel is uh, like a demonic entity, um, a deity. And so um, it is in the wilderness um, and it was considered away from the presence of God. Right. Um, yeah, when God um, had these two goats, the scapegoat and the goat that would be sacrificed, it was God that that cast the lots on the goat. So God is clearly superior. Right. He's the only one who's an offering is being made to. Right. Uh, Azazel is not um, being made an offering to. Right. The 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 goat that is laid on the altar is the offering. And so um, this actually represents um, the the lamb that was slain for our sins. Right. Um, yes, it's a goat, but it, those are are slightly interchangeable in the Bible. In this case, um, when we think about goats and lambs, we think about the right side and the left side of God. But this um, during this time, the standard was that a sheep, when they said a sheep, they were talking about a lamb or a goat. Um, that's why during the Passover, he said, get a sheep or a lamb or a goat is acceptable. Right. And so that's, that's why he used both of those words in the same way that when, um, Abraham went on the mountain to sacrifice his son, um, and his son asked, you know, where is the lamb? He said, the Lord will provide a lamb, but then there was a ram in the bush. A ram is not a lamb, but these are interchangeable. And so, um, here, the goat that is laid on the altar represents the lamb which was slain. And so remember, um, Christ died for our sins. He was completely innocent, right? But the one that walked away into the wilderness, um, that one was the, the one that the sin was on, right? And so the the one that was innocent died, but the one that was um the one that was guilty escaped, right? Into the wilderness. And so, you know, it represents so many things. But the thing that I felt like Holy Spirit was showing me was that you know, our price has been paid. The price for our sins has been paid. Um, Christ died, right? He was completely innocent and yet he died. And so he paid the price for our sins, right? It, it cleansed um, the temple. It cleansed um, us from, from our sin when we accepted him. And we, we now no longer are wandering in the wilderness, right? We are now able to come into the presence of God. Why? Because our sin has been atoned for, right? And so um, when when we have a, a issue, we can just follow Holy Spirit. When we have a problem, we can ask for forgiveness, right? Because it's already been paid for. Um, we don't have to worry about God turning his back on us because we no longer walk in the wilderness of rebellion, right? We walk with the Holy Spirit. And so when whenever we do something, we don't have to grieve the Holy Spirit every single time we sin. We can repent, right? The, the price is paid. We can repent, right? The lamb was slain for our sins. And so he accomplished what we could not do in the flesh. He died for our sins. He overcame sin. He, he fulfilled all of the law perfectly. And so when he was sacrificed, he was purely innocent and yet he died for our sins. Amen. All right. And so we need to be thankful for that. We need to be repentant for all of the things that we do wrong. We don't want to walk in the wilderness again. Why? Because our price has been paid. We don't want to walk in rebellion. God is our friend. He has made a way for us. If he wasn't our friend, he would not have made a way for us. He's a good father. And yet while we were in that wilderness, while we were yet in sin, Christ died. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for dying for us. Thank you for doing it so perfectly, God. Thank you for living your life so perfectly for us, God. Forgive us for all of our sins. 
cleanse us from all unrighteousness, create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us, Lord Jesus. Forgive us for all of our sins, God. Heal us, God. Give us a new mindset that goes after you and your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's gonna do just that, amen. One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you could stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ. Amen. Also, don't forget to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.